Good morning. This is Jeff Krauss from Stamps.com. Thank you very much for attending our webinar this morning. Uh, I wanted to um, obviously welcome all of you and, um, and just uh, start off with, by talking about why we're uh, doing this webinar here in September. First off, this is the time when we've got, when we have customers across the country. Uh, many of our shipping customers are, are in the heat right now of getting geared up for October and November, the heavy shipping season for the holiday season. So we definitely want to get out in front here and give you a little bit of the, uh, of the information that we've learned over the years about how to best get ready for this, uh, this most important part of the year. So let's dive in. Um, the, so so what, are the, what are the key challenges for holiday shipping? As you look out at October and November, and perhaps you have experience coming in from, from last year's holiday season, and things that either went well or didn't go well, um, but now's the time to get everything in place, uh, the last minute um, preparations, if you will, for this holiday season. So what, what can you expect during the holiday season? First off, and the, the thing that we're most concerned about are the you know, spikes in volume. Hopefully, going into the uh, holiday season, you're, you're going to see a significant increase in your volume over the course of the year. It can, it can represent 30, 40, or, or much higher percent of, of your sales for the year. So. Um, that's also important because it's significantly different from what you might, you might be, have experienced during the rest of the year. So a lot of your operations and a lot of, your, um, a lot of issues that might be small during the rest of the year become major inconveniences in the, in the shipping season, uh, in the holiday shipping season. Second, along with that volume spike is uh, the, the holiday shipping season is also the holiday selling season. And so online marketing becomes much more competitive. So you are out there competing with an, any, an, any number of additional sellers for the attention span of your buyer. And so uh, you need every tool at your disposal to, to capture the attention of your potential buyers. And it's a, it's a limited window. So you've got to capture them when they're out there and in that, in that buying mode. So uh, online marketing becomes much more competitive. Um, just as your fulfillment and your back office tasks become much more difficult. So you are faced during, uh, during November and during the heat of the battle, if you will, with you know, your fulfillment taking up a, a, an inordinate amount of your time. That's when you're up until 4 o'clock in the morning trying to get packages out the door. Um, at the end of the day, though, getting packages out the door isn't what's bringing in new revenue. Uh, it's the sales and marketing. And so all of the time that you spend in, in any inefficiencies in your fulfillment operation is actually time that's taken away from your sales and marketing efforts during that critical selling season. So, I mean, this is that, that tension between the amount of time you spend in fulfillment versus the amount of time you're spending in sales and marketing is, is critical and something to manage and be aware of up front. Um, also, all of your channels are active. So you may be selling on eBay or selling through an Amazon store or through your retail storefront um, for 80 to 90 percent of your volume throughout the rest of the year in the holiday shipping season where you might have only had two or three orders per week coming in from a Yahoo store or a, a, an, an additional uh, outlet. Uh, during the holiday selling season, you may have 15, 25, 30 orders a week or significant magnitudes of growth in those smaller channels that you might not have, um, have to worry about for much, much of the rest of the year. So when you've got all of your channels active, you, the complexity of what you're doing during that holiday shipping season uh, significantly increases. Um, and then last, uh, but certainly not least, what really often throws a, throws a wrench into holiday shipping are the surprises, the things that can't be anticipated um, in terms of either products that are popular or specific packaging needs or major, uh, major changes in your sales or marketing mix uh, dirt right in the middle of that holiday shipping season. So you don't know what may happen out there. And so uh, what, what can you do to get ready for that? So that, that kind of paints a picture. You've got complexity. You've got volume. You've got a lot of things happening in the, in the heat of the battle. And, and so the first thing we're here to really tell you is that there are, there are a lot of things you can do to get ready for that so that you are as prepared as possible to be as successful as possible during Q4. Um, 
So today, specifically, we want to talk about four things. First off, supporting free shipping. We'll talk about the importance of that. Many of you know the importance of that. Uh, but we, let's talk about free shipping because it's an important topic in Q4. Uh, getting the best rate. Ultimately, your, while your revenues are driven during your Q4 selling season, your profitability is significantly impacted. So you want to make the right decisions in terms of your holiday shipping so that you are being as profitable as possible during Q4 as well. Third, handling the volume. So stamps.com, the application that you all know and um, use, is a significant way that you can handle that volume and be, be ready to do that. So let's get stamps.com set up for Q4 for you. And then fourth, what are the other ways that we can get prepared for what's coming down the pipe? So let me, let's start off with the, with the uh, first topic there in supporting free shipping. So I'm going to uh, ask you a, a quick question here on... Um, offering another um, okay so many of you know that free shipping can be obviously a very important part of of what you are offering during the uh, during the shipping season so getting out there um, and offering uh, free shipping to your customers can be a powerful enticement to get them to come to your website. Um, just a couple of statistics that are out there, and, and these are kind of a couple amongst the many that are uh, out there that show the power of free shipping. 90% uh, of consumers suggest that free shipping as an offer on the web would draw them to a website. Number one, um, even greater than an online discount. So. 10% discount on um, the, the product that you're selling. Even more than, than getting that online discount, free shipping uh, really drives people's interest. It is one of their primary filters on purchasing. So if you've got free shipping and you're able to offer it, it can be a very powerful enticement. Um, and then, but at the same time, that's, that's not news. That's not news to, to many. 70% of retailers will use some type of free shipping upgrade or discounted shipping uh, to to entice visitors to the website. So this is pretty much common knowledge, and and, and in order to use it effectively, you've got to uh, you've got to know that you're competing against people that are using free shipping. Um, in fact, 41% of retailers say that they were, they're going to offer free shipping at some point, completely free shipping during the holiday season. So um, free shipping is a powerful tool, and it, and it's something you're you're completely aware of. So the question for you, and by using stamps.com, how can you make sure, how, can, how do you make sure you can offer free shipping during the holiday selling season? So what are the pieces that you need to have in place in order to do that? First off, uh, and I want to give you four rules that we've uh, learned from, from customers in, in over the years at stamps.com. First off, know how much free shipping costs you. So Free shipping is not free. Basically, it means that you're paying for shipping. And so to the degree that you know what your products are, what they weigh, and what your average, what your, um, your average shipping distance is. So are you based on the West Coast? So that you've got a lot of customers out on the East Coast that you're shipping what I call Zone 8 or the most distant in the United States that you can ship. Um, what does your shipping profile look like? And so what's your average package going to cost you going out the door? Yeah, you know kind of your shipping uh, profile, so you know whether you are using first-class mail or priority mail, and you've got some uh, history in terms of where your customers are. So know how much free shipping is going to cost you. Second, uh, know when you can afford it, and obviously the flip side of that is know when you can't afford it. There are going to be very specific circumstances where your business allows you to offer free shipping. Perhaps it's all the time. So if you're shipping a lightweight product that you know you're using a, a fairly inexpensive uh, class of mail, uh, so you're paying two, two or three dollars for a lightweight product, and you've built in the cost of shipping into what you're charging, you know you can offer free shipping all of the time. 
most merchants, frankly, can't offer free shipping to everybody on every order. So know what the circumstances are in which you can offer it, which effectively means since you know how much it costs you, where does your profit exceed the cost of free shipping by enough of a margin for it to make sense for you? So what products, what and what orders are um, generate enough profit for you to cover the free shipping cost? A um, couple of suggestions here. Is that in your business, is that multiple items? So if you order over three items, you can offer free shipping to that customer. Is it a dollar value? You know that your profits on, on customers and purchases, uh, if, you, if you order over $25 and you've got an average margin on your product, product that's relatively narrow and it's in the 20% plus range, then you know that you can afford free shipping on all orders over $25, or maybe that number is $30. But you're setting that based on what you know your cost is and what your profit margin is on your existing um, on your existing product. So a couple of the best practices there: um, using a dollar figure in terms of when free shipping is going to make sense is becomes relatively easy when you know that there's a relatively narrow uh, band of profitability across your product. If you make a significant profit on some products but a very low product, low margin on others, then free over $30, free shipping over $30 uh, is really going to hurt you if they're buying $30 worth of low margin product. Um, uh, same thing in terms of the number of different uh, products. And then uh, you may be in a business, the third situation where free shipping really makes sense is when you know you've got a class of profitable uh, products. So if you're selling DVDs where you've got fairly thin margins, you know you can't offer uh, free shipping on DVDs, but at the same time you may be offering also MP3 players or craft items where you have a significant margin, and on those you, you simply attach to individual products eligible for free shipping. So know, know when you can afford it. Um, and I know that that's not a simple task. Third, third, and this is really an important, an important point, make free shipping work for you. There is, and we've encountered and we've, we've worked with customers over the years that have free shipping. They've worked hard on, on getting their, the lowest cost for their shipping and knowing when it makes sense. But then they simply establish it as a policy in their store, and they're not out there putting it front and center in their marketing message. If you're going to incur the cost of free shipping for a significant amount of your, of your store orders, then sell it. Make sure that it is out there front and center so that it's really doing its job by bringing more and more customers to your website. So if you're going to go to the work to offer free shipping, Make sure everybody knows about it. Even if they may not be eligible on that product, they know you're offering it on, a, on another product. Lastly, the only way you make free shipping work for you in, at the end of the day is getting the best possible rate. So use your stamps.com in order to make sure, first off, if you're using FedEx or UPS for a portion of your shipping, then make sure that you are not incurring the surcharges or other things that are going to going to make that shipping, free shipping on UPS or FedEx even, even harder to accomplish. Get that over to the Postal Service for every package that makes sense. And then make sure you're shipping in the right class. So let's, let's talk about a little bit of, a little bit of this. Um, let me go into, let me take a, a diversion here into flat rate shipping. So free shipping is very compelling. Flat rate shipping is something you might want to take a look at as an alternative to free shipping that gives you the ability to offer a flat rate for all orders that go out the door, whether it's a $1.95, $2.99, $4.99, $9.99, flat rate shipping for as much as you buy. The, the dollar figure that you set as your flat rate shipping um, is up to you and your, your product. So if you're, you, you've got to establish that and what makes sense to the customer. What you're doing with flat rate shipping is saying you're, you're subsidizing the cost of shipping, so you're not able to incur the full cost of whatever it may um, be to ship out a product. But what you are doing for the consumer, for your buyer, is taking shipping out of the decision-making process. So they know they've got a fixed number that they're just going to add that, that they can actually take, well, how much is this going to cost to ship it to me? 
that uncertainty out of the buying equation. It's actually a very effective way of, of letting people know that, yes, there is going to be a shipping cost, but it's not going to be, one, a surprise, or two, it's not going to be uncertain. You're not going to, you're not going to have to worry about it. So obviously, Overstock.com really has, uh, has um, pioneered and, and utilizes flat rate shipping as a pretty compelling way to, to change people's buying behavior. Um, the second thing here in flat rate shipping that's, that's really important is the Postal Service you're going to see going out um, this fall with another major campaign on flat rate boxes and flat rate envelopes. So the Postal Service's number one message out there to consumers and to businesses for shipping is take advantage of their flat rate shipping options. So whenever the Postal Service is out there talking about flat rate packaging, they're really echoing your message or you have the opportunity to echo their message on flat rate shipping as an easy, convenient way to, to manage your shipping costs. So you're getting a little bit of leverage from the U.S. Postal Service's own internal marketing. So it's a, it's a good way to, to take a, a free ride on, on their marketing as well. Um, at the end of the day, one of the main things that you are interested in for the holiday shipping season is making sure you're getting the best rate from the U.S. Postal Service. And there are a lot there. There's a fair amount of complexity in terms of how to do that. I want to simplify it today down to a couple of very easy rules. First off, if you're shipping under 13 ounces, you're you're going to want to be using first class mail. First class packages for under 13 ounces are, is by far the best value in shipping in the United States today. Uh, it, uh, the delivery time on it is not as narrow as the premium classes from the Postal Service, but you've got a, a large network across the USPS that's really focused on serving first class mail customers. You're, in, you're under 13 ounces, and so you can take advantage of all of that. You can get nearly as good a tracking with first class mail with delivery confirmation as you can with more premium classes. So, Really take a look at first class mail, experiment with it, um, know where that 13 ounce mark is because that's going to be very important in making sure you qualify for it. In first class mail though, make sure you're, you're shipping a first class package as opposed to a letter or a large envelope. Uh, first class packages cost a little bit more uh, than mail obviously, but uh, it's important to make that distinction. If you're shipping a first class package at a first class letter rate, it's likely to be returned to you. Um, the cost isn't that much more, and still you're you're paying two, two to three dollars for that first class parcel. In any case, um, best deal in shipping today. Second, media mail, and this is something that probably goes without saying, but any of you that are using that are shipping CDs, books, DVDs in particular, if that's a core part of your business, you you I'm sure you already know about the power of media mail and um, the discounts that are available there. Media mail is not a, uh, a fast or expedited class of mail. So you're going to get lower service levels in media mail, but it is likely to work out for you to be the lowest cost way to get that package out there. If people are paying for free, sh or if they're, they're not paying for shipping, they don't expect you to overnight the package to them. So media mail uh, and, and again, those of you that are shipping CDs and books and DVDs, uh, you, you already, I'm sure, are, are well aware of the, the potential power of media mail. Last, everything else should go priority mail. Um, priority mail is where the focus of the Postal Service is on improving both the visibility and the tracking and the speed of delivery. You get two to three day service anywhere in the United States, um, so, and which obviously includes uh, Puerto Rico and um, uh, Alaska, Hawaii, uh, places where the other carriers simply can't do two to three day service for, for anywhere close to the cost. You are also by and large shipping to consumers and anytime you walk up to the door of a, uh, of a uh, customer, so up to a resident, the Postal Service is, is in all likelihood going to be by far the lowest cost way to get there. Um, your residential surcharges from the Postal Service, or your, your residential surcharges from um, UPS and FedEx are going to cost you at least $2.60 for each package, 
And then if it's a rural area or it's outside of a, uh, a metropolitan area, you're going to be charged an additional $2.60. So you've got $5.20 uh, from UPS or FedEx for residential delivery in, in outside of a metropolitan area right off the bat. So um, we look at priority mail as the primary way that you should be looking at shipping this year. Um, their parcel post is, is an alternative. Um, it is a slower ground service that goes out in two to nine days. It is usually, uh, depending upon the weight you put in it, usually not that, more, not that much more less expensive. It can be 20, 30, 40 cents less expensive, but um, the difference in uh, quality of service and delivery time is substantial. So um, if, if at all possible, we think you should be in priority mail. And um, the, the additional point I'll make there on priority mail versus parcel post is the returns, so the number of customers that, that regret their decision to buy something and they'll actually um, send it back to you is much lower. It's, it's lower by 25 to 35 percent for customers that use priority mail versus parcel post. And that is generally because the two to three day service window allows you to get that package in their hands before they have too much of the, of the, the feeling that, oh, they shouldn't have done it, or things change for them, and they may have found it offline um, in a store. So you want to get that, once they've made that purchase decision, you want to get it in their hands. And so you really can't afford seven, eight day service to them. Um, so get the best USPS rate. When you're in um, stamps.com, you will, uh, you can obviously uh, shop for that best rate. And I'll flip over into the software here in just a minute to show you how to do that. Um, priority mail flat rate boxes. So when are flat rate boxes the right choice for you? Um, because they are not always the right choice. For those of you that are, um, are regular shippers, you'll know that the, media, the, the flat rate options for the Postal Service are generally um, averages across the United States and uh, specifically across different zones and weight categories. So uh, in order to get a flat rate, they basically took the average of what it's going to cost them. So it's to your advantage to use a flat rate box or envelope when the, the cost, the, the non-flat rate cost is going to be greater. Um, and so for instance, there are four main priority mail flat rate packages. First off, the flat rate envelope. The flat rate envelope costs, I believe, four seventy-five. We'll be in the software here to to, to see that. But um, the flat rate envelope, anytime and anytime you can use a flat rate envelope to ship something out, it's going to save you money. There is no less expensive way to um, to be able to do that. Um, this is. So let's see. Um, the second is the small flat rate box. Um, small flat rate box is about the size of an, of, a, of an old VHS cassette, a little bit larger than that. If you're shipping anything over one pound, then the small flat rate box, and it can fit in a small flat rate box, then you are, pretty, you are good to go across the board. Um, and but if you're below if you're below a pound and you're using that box, then or and there is a similar box available from the postal service that's not flat rate that will where you're going to pay for exactly the zone that it's going to. Um, anytime you're in zone five, six, seven, or eight, which means you're approximately half the country away from where you are. So if you're shipping from Los Angeles, Chicago is a zone five, New York is a zone eight. So between zone five and eight, a flat rate box is going to be a great option for you. So that's when the flat rate options start to become really powerful. Um, for coastal shippers, if you're shipping from the East Coast or the West Coast, flat rate packaging for all of your orders to the opposite coast makes a great deal of sense. Your medium flat rate box, there's effectively a dotted line at eight pounds. And your large flat rate box, there's effectively a dotted line at, at 12 pounds. Check the individual rate tables uh, that are available at www.usps, 
com slash prices. So check out, get a uh, priority mail rate chart so that you know where the flat rate box actually makes more sense for you. So these, these are some guidelines here. Your small flat rate box is going to cost you $485. Your medium flat rate box, $1020. And your large flat rate box, $1395. Um, the next to look at when using the flat rate options is they can save you a lot of time and energy. Even if you end up spending another 30 or 40 cents on a package because it's only going to Denver from Los Angeles, then that may well be worth it. Number one, you don't have to buy the box. The Postal Service will provide that for you. And number two, the you don't need to worry when uh, your packaging is coming down the line which box it goes in or um, how to pack it out so that it's going to, to be at the lowest cost. There's a significant operational savings to using uh, flat rate boxes from the Postal Service that shouldn't be underestimated. If you're paying 25, 30 cents for a box, and then you're spending 10 minutes trying to figure out how to get um, which packaging, how to fill it, et cetera, then a flat rate box is a great way to really eliminate all of those operational costs and make your shipping operation a lot more efficient. So just something to, to keep in mind when you're doing this, you can, you'll save in certain zones and in certain circumstances on the shipping cost itself, but there's also an operational savings that can really simplify your entire operation. Let me go to handling the volume. This is an important part of Q4 shipping or holiday shipping. So let's, and we're going to spend a fair amount of time here in the stamps.com software itself. Um, so let me, um, so let me talk about how to think about handling the volume for the holiday shipping season. First off, you want to look at your entire shipping process as the, the as as optimizing the entire. Uh, shipping from when a customer makes an order through to when you get the package out the door. Your fulfillment starts from the moment they've made that purchase. And so when you're thinking about the volume, make sure you're, you're thinking about the entire chain of getting that, door out, uh, that package out the door. And so that, that brings me to the first point here, import directly from the website or the web store. So if you are downloading into an Excel spreadsheet or manually copying over address by address, then that's a fairly inefficient way to go about importing your all of your uh, orders. If you've got multiple websites or web stores, getting them all into one place very quickly and easily is going to save you a, a tremendous amount of time in preparing to get your shipping out the door. Second is then if you are cutting and pasting over into stamps.com, um, consider batch printing. If you can line up 50 orders or 25 orders and hit one button to print out all the shipping labels, then that's going to that's gonna save you a fair amount of time. Um, you may have different, if, particularly if you're operating on different web platforms um, between Amazon or Etsy and, uh, and eBay, your own web store, processing similar orders together from across different platforms can save you a significant amount of, of setup time for, for different types of products. So, if you've got t-shirts or apparel that are going out, get all of your apparel out together. Your packaging is going to be similar. Your shipping methods are going to be similar. Uh, and, and processing them all at once is going to, going to help save and uh, optimize your, your process. And then high-speed printing. If you're printing off labels one at a time, then you're really not being able to take advantage of the, the possibility of printing off 20 or 30 labels in, in a minute because they're all stacked up. So, uh, where high-speed printing can be useful, get a thermal printer and, and get some labels, and, and you'll be ready to really handle that volume um, and make, make that process pretty streamlined. Um, at this point, let me flip over. I know if, you, if anyone has questions, and I should have said this earlier, but if you have questions, type them into the questions window on your screen there. And at the end of today's webinar, I'm going to uh, answer a variety of these. And we'll also, we at stamps.com are in the process of also answering those questions throughout the webinar. So um, please feel free. If you've got specific questions, I'd love to answer them for you today. And if we can't answer them for you today, we'll certainly get back to you with an answer on them specifically. Um, 
I'm going to move right now over from our from this presentation over into stamps.com itself because some of these are um, because I'd like to give you a, a really good idea of how to do a lot of these uh, these things that I'm suggesting. So what I've done, I'm just going to go to my home page here. This is stamps.com, literally sitting on on a computer here at at, at stamps.com um, that's that's been set up for this. So go into First off, I want to recommend that everyone take a look at what version of stamps.com they're using. So as you can see, the version of stamps.com that I'm using today is version 8.7.4. That is the most up-to-date version of stamps.com. It has all of the features that I'll be talking about today, and it's going to be um, the, the most advanced and available to you to, uh, or the most are ready to ship for this holiday season. So first step, make sure you've got the, the most up-to-date um, stamps.com software installed. Um, you're familiar with the software here, but um, I have stamps.com professional shipper up, and so I have an ODBC toolbar. Um, you are shipping from uh, the packages tab, as, as we call it, and from the packages tab, you have the ability to pull in orders directly from your database. So um, you can pull in um, from your eBay web store or from your, your, um, your own web store, order ID 123, and simply hit get order. I don't have an order 123, so I wouldn't find anything there. Um, but you've got the ability to connect stamps.com up right with your own software. So consider that. Take a look at that. Under as a professional shipper option uh, that you uh, you might be able to take advantage of. So if you are in uh, so first point, let's take a look at the uh, at rating the different classes. So let's ship from the uh, California Los Angeles out to two 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 o two, which happens to be in Arlington, Virginia. Um, So in Arlington, Virginia, I'm going to send a package, and I've got the opportunity to send it either express mail overnight, um, priority mail, or first class. And I'm going to get different. If I go parcel post, it will get there in eight days, cost me $4.90. If I go priority mail, it will get there in two days and cost $5.44. So at $5.44, you're paying 50, 54 cents more than parcel post. You're getting it there in two days versus eight days. It's really a very strong, uh, very strong possibility or uh, uh, service level. If you're going with first class mail and you have a small enough uh, package, again under 13 ounces, then getting it there in three days for a dollar 22 is a really, really powerful value proposition. So um, take a look at this. Use the ETA to, to really make the determination in terms of how fast you need to get it there. And, um, and then choose the right mail class for you. If you are using any of the flat rate products from the Postal Service, the flat rate envelopes, flat rate small, uh, medium, or large flat rate boxes, choose, a, choose the, the proper mail class here in order, or mail piece in order to get it out there uh, in, the right, uh, in the right way and to get the, the lowest price. So if you're using a flat rate uh, package, uh, don't set this up as a package and um, rate on this, you won't be actually getting the best rate if you're uh, if you're um, if you've already done that analysis to understand what it is. Um, you know about the insurance option for those packages of yours that require insurance uh, or that where that are valuable. Uh, if you're passing along the cost to your customer and you need to put two hundred and fifty dollars worth of insurance on this package, then go ahead and, and um, select the packaging, um, stamps.com insurance. We have just uh, decreased the cost of stamps.com insurance, and it's, uh, at this point, 40% below what it is with USPS. So you can save significantly by using USPS insurance in order to get that out the door, and it becomes a much lower cost for you and for your customer in order to get the level of, of confidence and security you need in, in your shipping. Um, also, for uh, of course, for packages going this distance across the country in priority mail, you need to, to enter in there uh, the package dimensions 
or again one of the things you can do to get prepared for holiday shipping is actually set up a set of preset packages so I can I can indicate this one as my small uh, baseball box and it's rectangular six by six by six and now I've got right there the possibility or I can simply set up my baseball box as one of the boxes that I'm choosing here um, so getting your boxes set up and, and inside the stamps.com software is a great way that you can get ready for that shipping season set your preferences go into the file menu and the preferences down the preferences tab the preferences tab lets you set all of those um, settings that you want to leave the same pretty much for your your shipping season so you can set up the uh, how how long you want stamps.com to log off after or if you want to leave it on for for days at a time that's fine as well post date your mail you know when your carrier is going to be picking up your mail generally let's say it's it's four o'clock in the afternoon you know that any packages that get shipped out or that get processed after 4 o'clock are simply not going to make it out that day. Make sure that you set your post date uh, to 4 o'clock or to 3 o'clock if that's the right date. And um, you, will, you will minimize the, the potential for you printing out a shipping label for the wrong date. So, something to just set, you know what time your carrier shows up generally, and then you can set a, a rule in place that everything is everything flips over to the next day if it's printed after 3 o'clock. Um, warn me when I'm low on postage. Uh, I think that's a, that's a pretty valuable, you know, I set it in here at, you know, $10. You may want to, for the holiday shipping season, up this from $10 to $50 so that you don't um, run into any problems when you need that postage. It, it's 10 o'clock at night on a Thursday and you you need to get postage in your account. Um, clear out your cost codes, clear out your memo, memo field after every shipping label so you're not carrying that data over. Uh, so go into your preferences menu, check out the different things that you can set up to optimize how you want your shipping to be done this holiday season. Set it once and then forget it until January 1st. Um, so that's your preferences menu. What I want to do now is flip over into batch processing. This is the, the largest new area where you can really get ready for higher volumes this season. So first off, the batch, uh, batch area of stamps.com is designed to do exactly the two things that you need to do during Q4 in order to manage your volume. Number one, it it allows you to import from all of your different e-commerce or um, uh, online uh, marketplaces and even from different ODBC or XML files that you may generate from your own website uh, or just a, a plain old Excel, uh, Excel spreadsheet. It allows you to aggregate and bring in all of those orders into one location every day uh, or whenever you need to do your shipping. So. Um, that, right in and of itself, if you're working on Amazon or on eBay and you need to pull in 10 or 20 uh, orders, the easiest way to do is simply to, to click on your, set up your eBay store um, and import all, uh, open up stamps.com, hit eBay and then refresh and it'll pull in all of your orders from eBay. Um, web stores can go back two days, uh, um, Excel files three days, but It'll go back there and it'll pull in all your orders. Generally, this is done pretty much every day. So you're pulling in all your orders from today, or, and it then will populate your screen with the order ID, the cost, any missing information. So you may not have coming in from eBay, whether it's going priority mail or first class. So you can set that right here. You may not have the dimension set. You may need to add insurance. Anything you want to do, you can actually do for all of them here. So let me pull in, I know I've got a couple of ODBC orders here. These are all set to go out priority mail. But what if I want to um, apply to m all of them? If I want to upgrade all of these to express mail because there was a, a snowstorm in Chicago and so I need to get them there overnight, I can do it right from this screen. So you can manage all of the information for these different packages 
right from a single screen. Then when you are ready to ship, let me just get my screen here large enough so that you can see everything. Um, you've got you know two or 22 packages. Set the mailing date for today. Um, set them up on a on using uh, an SDC labels or using your uh, Zebra thermal printer, and just simply hit print postage. It sends off all orders that have a green check mark next to them. Sends them all directly to the printer, and then you print it off, and you've gotten ready for the shipping for all 22 orders in just a couple of minutes. So it's a really uh, efficient place to, to manage all of your orders. Um, one note on high-speed printing, stamps.com has actually in, increased its print speeds quite dramatically over the last couple of years. And so you'll see print speeds using our software at up to 60 labels per minute on a, on a Zebra printer. So uh, there's, there's really, if you've got a couple of hundred, or I, we have literally customers that are doing thousands of packages a day, um, being able to get them out at 60 labels per minute is pretty, pretty powerful. So take a look at the batch processing screen and use batch processing in order to really make your shipping easier. Um, I want to go back to something that I mentioned earlier, which is the if you want to process, if you have three or four different web stores, but you want to process all of your apparel items or all of your baseball collection items all at the same time, you can pull them into the stamps.com interface that you see here, and then just click on the, the 5 or 10 or the 20% of them that you want to process all at once and send those to be printed. Stamps.com will go ahead and print the labels, and then it will push the, it'll mark them as printed, and so they're out of your queue, and then you can do the same with a, with a, different, um, with a different set of packages. So you can use this to manage the shipping waves or the shipping um, batches that you that you send to the printer or send to your um, packing uh, team. So that's a that's something to to, to keep in mind as you do that. Uh, definitely explore this tab uh, and look into. I want to mention one additional thing is that is the stamps.com or the USPS scan form. I don't believe these. I haven't printed um, labels for today. I don't believe I will have eligible transactions for a scan form. But I wanted to, to highlight this. Customers really are expecting a high level of tracking, and they want to know when their uh, shipment, their product that they've purchased, has been sent to the Postal Service. By at the end of the day, if your carrier, let's say, comes at 4 o'clock, printing off a scan form for all of the packages that your carrier is going to be taking today, printing off one scan form, that attaches um, to that 20, those 22 packages gives the Postal Service one form to actually, they just scan the barcode on that form, and it registers a pickup scan or an acceptance scan on all 22 packages. So all of your customers that you're shipping for that day, if they go ahead and check uh, their, their status, you've sent them their delivery confirmation or tracking number through stamps.com, they go in there and they tr they track it when they get home from work today. They'll see that the postal service already has that, and so the scan form allow instead of forcing the postal service to scan each of those 22 packages, which some days they might not do, but during the holiday shipping season, it's harder for them to get that done. You've given them one simple sheet of paper. They make one scan and then they certify to the customer that they have they have picked up the package and it's on its way. Uh, that's going to do a great deal in terms of minimizing the number of phone calls that you're going to be getting. So think about using the scan form, practice with it. Um, so take a look through stamps.com uh, and new features that we have introduced that might be able to help, uh, man help you make your shipping process more efficient this holiday season. Update it with the, the most recent software and start to um, start to get your settings all set up for when you for in order in order to optimize your shipping this fall. Okay, let me uh, let me flip back over into the uh, presentation here for one moment, and let me hit the final topic that I want to talk about: getting prepared. September is the month for you to get out there and to think through your shipping process and get all of the pieces in place. Um, order up your, your packaging, your supplies. So if you're using USPS 
packaging uh, or their flat rate on flat rate envelopes or flat rate boxes or any of their packaging that's not flat rate get that ordered from them that can take three four weeks to come and it's going to be very difficult to get it at the end of November if you run out so get that packaging in place now and as you move throughout the season uh, make sure that you're you're keeping an eye on what your packaging inventory is the worst thing that you you need to do is to show up on December 1st and have orders coming in um, like crazy and then just not have the packaging to uh, to to get them out the door you'll you'll spend an arm and a leg at the last minute in order to get those packages in the mail so get your packaging your supplies right down to your void fill depends on what you use between cardboard or peanuts or or what you have but Void fill is something that, that people run out of uh, at the last minute quite frequently. And so in order to prevent you from using newspaper or something at the last minute, uh, it's important to get those, get those supplies pack, um, ordered up now so that you've got them uh, throughout the season. And then mark your calendar on the 15th and 30th of, of each month to go back and check what your inventory is of those. Put those reminders right in your Outlook or in your calendar so that you so you take two minutes to do that inventory so you don't end up in a, in a tight spot. Um, second, test your equipment, your space, and your workflow. So if last year you, you got overwhelmed and you were printing on plain paper and you want to move over to a thermal printer this year, like a Zebra uh, 2844 or, or another or a Samsung uh, thermal printer, then you know, go ahead and get that equipment in place. Order up your labels from stamps.com. Uh, you'll find, I think, that we have some of the best label prices in in uh, available out there. Uh, I think our labels end up, if you order them by the case, costing less than two cents. Uh, if you end up going to Staples or, or going at the last minute to try to get la labels in late December, you're going to be paying six and seven cents a label. So get them in place now. Um, also, your space. Uh, make sure you've gotten your your space. Uh, completely configured for how your shipping workflow is going to work. Get that all done. Take an afternoon here in, in September and, and plan that out. And you'll, you'll really be grateful for it come, come December 1st. We really recommend in September going out and meeting your postal carrier and your postmaster. They are your best friends come December 1st. They're getting a lot more volume. And if you need a favor, you need a pickup, you need, you need some additional assistance at the last minute, um, they are going to be a lifesaver. And they, they are on your side. They want to make your shipping operation as efficient as it can be because, frankly, it makes their operation as efficient as it can be. So go out and meet them. Uh, your local postmaster and your postal carrier uh, can be very helpful for you uh, in, in the heat of the battle, as it, as it were. So, so take, take some time now. Also, and talk to them just about, about when, about who you are, because many of them may, may or may not know, and that you're expecting some increased volume here, and, and they may have some tips for you, and they may be able to help you get the packaging that you need to support those customers. So um, it's a, it's a, they're going to be your best friend. And then lastly, because we're, we're really optimizing shipping from one perspective to make your product as compelling as possible and your sales and marketing efforts as compelling as possible. So if you're planning on running a free shipping offer at the end of this year or on December 1st or right after Thanksgiving, by, um, by all means, test out those free shipping offers on your website in September, in October, so that the first day you put up a free shipping offer on your, on your website shouldn't be December 1st because you just, you, you really should be testing them out beforehand, so you get a, you get a little bit of a sense in terms of how they're going to um, how they're going to impact your business. So um, get your get your stamps.com software all set up and optimized, and you're and you're ready to go. Um, so you are you're ready. Um, you're gonna you've got the next three to four weeks to to kind of get set to get a plan in place, um, and then. You know, when those orders start flowing in, you're you're ready to ship. So um, let me let me dive into a couple of questions that have come in throughout the throughout the the um, webinar today. First off, on international packages, international packages two to three pounds. Um, we have the at stamps.com the fastest growing uh, mail classes that we're seeing today are actually 
international priority mail and international express mail. The tracking on these products from the Postal Service are going through the roof. So you've got Foreign Post and the U.S. Postal Service that's doing a great job in providing tracking and visibility into international priority mail and international express mail in particular. So take a look at them. Um, so as potential upgrades to First Class International, First Class International is going to be your lowest cost option. Um, so take so First Class International for up for packages up to four pounds is by far the least expensive uh, service to send out some small lightweight packages. So by all means, look at uh, First Class International as a as a great way to to send it out there. I think we we've, we've got an example of just a, a 12 ounce package, so less than a pound, a standard kind of small package that goes off from the U.S. to France would would cost 26.60 by priority mail, whereas it would only cost nine dollars by first class. So um, take a look at both of those options out there in terms of the, the visibility and the tracking that you want on those packages. Um, but the the clear message from the postal service that we we're seeing today is that. Uh, international shipping of lightweight packages, uh, you can save uh, a great deal of money by using the U.S. Postal Service. Um, another point here I want to go back on, does the USPS offer packaging the way UPS and FedEx do? And the answer is yes. We've been talking about some of the packaging options here. Uh, one of the things that is coming out starting in 2011 are an even uh, expanded group of packaging options. So keep an eye on free packaging supplies from the Postal Service. You can order all types of free USPS priority mail and express mail packaging directly through stamps.com. So go into your stamps.com software, go into our online store, and click on free USPS packaging. And you'll be able to, um, to pick up to, to have sent to you um, bundles of free USPS boxes and envelopes if you use them. Another question here, will the USPS pick up the packages? Absolutely. Um, the USPS offers carrier pickup right to your door. You can arrange for a USPS carrier pickup directly through the stamps.com software. Um, just by clicking on the, the US, USPS pickup right on your stamps.com software, um, I'm actually going to bring it up in the um, software here so that you can see it. But it's, uh, it's very easy at the end of the day. You know what shipping needs to go out the door. And so simply click on USPS Pickup right over here on the left-hand side of the screen. And you can arrange for the USPS to be sure to pick up your packages on tomorrow's normally scheduled pickup. So, what it means is that they will arrive at your door expecting to pick up however many packages you've told them. Um, you need to have at least one priority mail, express mail, or international package in order to use USPS pickup. But if you've got one priority mail package and 25 first class packages, that's perfectly fine um, as long as you have one of the, one of the uh, priority mail packages. So definitely take advantage of that. It helps out the Postal Service so that they know what to uh, expect when they show up at your door. And it helps you out in terms of making sure that they're going to, they're going to be uh, expecting those packages tomorrow from you. Lastly, I got one more question on, our, on the uh, eBay and Amazon integration. Will orders from Amazon, eBay, et cetera, automatically be updated with tracking info? Or do you manually need to take the tracking info and put it back into eBay or Amazon. Uh, this, is, this is very important, and it's actually a great feature from stamps.com. Stamps.com will automatically post back the delivery confirmation number, your tracking number, into eBay or Amazon or some of the different uh, e-commerce uh, fulfillment software that we support. So um, take a look at, number one, whether we support your e-commerce software. More likely than not, uh, it will, it's, it's going to be the case that they do. And um, then we post right back into that file. Same thing if you're using an ODBC or just an Excel file or an XML file, then go ahead and configure stamps.com to, once you've shipped the package, 
post back that tracking info right into your spreadsheet or, or wherever you're utilizing it. So, um, so yes, we absolutely do post back into, into wherever you're getting the shipping from. Um, I've got maybe one more minute, so let me, let me take one more question here. Can stamps.com print APO customs forms to prevent trips to the post office? Um, the, the answer is currently, depending upon which of our platforms you're using, you, you could be using our stamps.com software, such as what's up on the screen here, or you could be using the stamps.com API that is directly integrated into your, um, into your uh, web store or your e-commerce shopping cart. If you're using the API from stamps.com that is essentially a direct pipeline into your, uh, your e-commerce software or into your internally built operation or, or e-commerce operation, then we do offer the APO, FPO customs forms that go with the um, that go directly with the shipping label, so that you can fill out those custom forms and upload the custom forms and get those printed out automatically through your system. Um, expect within within the next uh, couple of releases, so probably by the end of the year, that Stamps.com will be offering APO FPO custom forms uh, directly through its software. So today, currently, if you're using the Stamps.com software you cannot um, fill out the APO, FPO customs forms on, uh, directly through our software. You've got to fill those out separately, either by hand uh, or through, uh, through a, a different piece of software. Um, on your international customs forms, all of your international customs forms, are, um, be, are you're able to fill them out directly through stamps.com. So uh, you'll see that coming down the pipe for APO, FPO. So, Thank you very much. Uh, again, this is, uh, we hope that this has been valuable for you in, in getting ready to think about what the, stamps, what the um, holiday shipping season is going to look like for you, uh, trigger some thoughts on how you can make sure you are optimizing your fulfillment and shipping operation, and at the same time, making sure you are reducing your shipping costs to the lowest possible point. Um, our job at stamps.com is to make your uh, shipping process as efficient and as low cost as it can be. Hopefully today's webinar sparked some ideas that are going to help your business. Um, we do, we are planning another, we have a series of webinars of which this is one, and our next webinar is going to be on October 27th, in about a month, uh, on optimizing your e-commerce store. We're going to dive directly into your eBay, Amazon, Yahoo store and give you some tips on how to make sure that that links up with stamps.com in the easiest possible way. So again, thank you very much for your time today, and have a, have a great holiday season. Thanks a lot. Have a good day.